Right, gonna be doing the final video or maybe second to last video for the Dragon of Ice Fire Peak series. I'm excited. Where's Jake though? He's taking forever. You know what? I'm just gonna put my Jake hat on and we're gonna do it without him. There we go. Hi, I'm Jake from J&J &J Tabletop and I ran Dragon of Ice Fire Peak. Learned a few things about it along the way. I made some mistakes and did some things I had liked and some things I didn't like. I had a lot of fun learning and playing this game with my friend. Hi. Hey, friend. How you doing? Did you... I'm... Fine. Did you start the video already? What? What video? Are you wearing your J-Cat again? Yeah. Well, hello there. I actually am Jake from J&J &J Tabletop, and with me, as always, is my good friend Josh. Having a little fun with the kind of the grand finale of this wonderful Dragon of Ice Fire Peak adventure. And this video obviously is going to contain spoilers for the Ice Spire Hold adventure. So I guess if you're a player, I mean, you can watch the video if you want. I and mean, if you don't, just, I mean, hit the like button on the way out. Maybe that would be cool. Uh, either way, you go ahead and make a good decision for you. Josh, normally we start off with a quest card because we like to take a look at things from the player's perspective, but it's missing. Hey, here's the thing about the quest card. There is none. Yeah. Nothing. This is it. Don't get scared <laughs> now. <laughs> I guess we'll just start off talking about Icepire Hold itself, the location. Yeah, Icepire Hold, it's like a stone fortress on top of Icepire Peak. It was established by a warlord named, forgive my mispronunciation, Delcendra Am Amzar. I think you did fine. <laughs> I feel like that's a voice that you have to say in ye old frost giant from ancient relics and hokey religions voice, you know? Yes. <laughs> Bill Sandra <laughs> Mzar. <laughs> she also has <laughs> an Xbox that she wants that she keeps in her quarters. <laughs> oh, I boy. have rock band. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Delcendra Amzar is a warlord that has lived in Icepire Hold for many years. Uh, they kept the orcs of the Sword Mountains at bay, and then one particularly harsh winter uh, cut off their supplies, and they started to starve to death, her and her soldiers. So that's when the orcs were like, ooh, opportunity, and they took over the fortress, drove them out, and they were just kind of using that for their base of operations in the region. So that's why... There's a lot of orcish activity because Cryovane has come and uh, kicked the orcs out. Your players are going to notice that Icepire Hold is kind of in a state of disrepair and, and a lot of it is broken down. Uh, that's because there was a, a very strong earthquake that wrecked a lot of it, broke a lot of pieces off, and it, it was just never repaired after that. I guess the orcs in this area just, they weren't, they weren't okay. builders. Who cares? It's fine. It serves its purpose. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of nice things, I thought it was very nice that when we were searching to find Icepire Hold, you gave Marcus a vision, and that that's actually how we were able to find it. Did you make that up? Like, how was that supposed to go? Yeah, that was a part where I wasn't exactly sure how it would go because there's a bunch of options laid out. The vision is actually supposed to take place in the Shrine of Savras, which is a just a secondary side quest. It's not something that is necessarily going to be something that your characters, uh, the players are going to go on. And you didn't. Uh, if you're interested in doing that, it, it's almost not even really worth a video on it because the guidelines for the encounter there is so easy. But basically, the if a character touches the altar at the Shrine of Savras, they get a vision of knowing exactly how to get to Icepire Hold. And so I combined having this method with Timora's Luck. Timora's Luck is someone wants to go pray at Timora's Shrine. You can have a villager maybe suggest that if you want, something to make that a little more obvious of an option. But Josh, you had Marcus just want to do this. I was like, this is like so easy. I'm just going to combine these methods and make it simpler and so as soon as marcus uh did his thing i think i said like you touched the altar and like you just were kind of stationary for like a minute or whatever and i think daisy and lindor was like he's really taking this seriously <laughs> like okay and it's like nope he had an out-of-body experience and now knows <laughs> how to get to the ice fire hold and yeah. so it just felt simpler and also at this point in the adventure it just kind of felt like 
you guys are like, we're there, we know we're ready to fight Cryovane, let's do the thing. So I didn't want to hold that off anymore. The Time War is Luck option that's presented in the module, though, says after that the, somebody prays at the altar, the next morning, there's a mysterious rider that comes into town that's part of the Stone Cold Reavers, that there's going to be more on them a little bit later, but they're a group of mercenaries, I guess is a better word, not adventurers per se, although I guess there's some overlap there but they're trying to take the treasure that the dragon has which the module also is like eh, there's not really any treasure but that's another thing that's a little <laughs> weird but you know you can have them they went to barthen to try and find supplies and everything was about like super cold things josh i think when we were prepping for this you were like there you, do you have an arrow of dragon slaying around for you <laughs> like you can have that and you know uh, well, some you kind of don't I'll keep one of those around. <laughs> yeah. Around, around yeah, you can have this this just word of this rider getting to them. You can have maybe they follow him closely. Maybe they're like, oh, no, he only left about a half an hour ago or whatever. Either way, this is a path to Icefire Hold, pun actually intended. That would make the uh, the Stone Cold Reavers section, which we'll go over more later, more interesting, I think, because... Especially if they notice that you're following the one of them, <laughs> you know, I don't know. It, it's yeah, it, it adds another level to that, I think. I agree. And I think the simplest method to find Ice Fire Hold and probably the one that if you're watching this video, I would just suggest that you do this, that a group of orcs attack Vandalin on the last adventure that the heroes were off doing and they captured an orc alive and the orc wants to be alive and maybe they the villagers got a little information out of the orc knowing that they know where Ice Fire Hold is and tells about how the dragon kicked him out, the whole deal, and you just serve it up on a silver platter. I didn't know what I was going to do, but the way our adventure unfolded, I was like, oh, I'm going to do the vision, but I'm going to have it when they touch Timora's shrine. <laughs> this works perfectly. <laughs> yeah, I think that the captured orc is, it definitely makes sense. I mean, you don't even have to do that at the end, too. You could do that in any of the many moments where your characters or your, your players are fighting orcs you know if one of them is left alive or anything like that or that's a good point yeah i guess it depends on where you're watching this video did you are you watching this right <laughs> as you're about to run ice fire hold <laughs> or have you not run the adventure <laughs> yeah not run, <laughs> run the adventure yet anybody that is familiar with this channel knows how much you love rangers oh yeah what if a group like has a ranger and like they want to search for it on their own like what kind of a process would you have if you were going to run that part Specifically, if it's a ranger, you're going to look at, is the dragon a favorite enemy of theirs or anything yeah. like that? Because that's going to help big time. They're probably going to be pretty good at survival. You know, at this stage in the game, they've probably encountered the dragon before. They've probably seen it before. So you could let your ranger make like a preliminary check for directions that they think they saw that dragon uh, going in. And then, you know, just decide on a, a DC. It's could be a number that they might not be able to reach in, in one d20 and just every time they roll a d20 they're adding up until they get there you know so like if your dc is 50 and they roll super high every time whenever they get to 50 or above it's like oh you you think you know where it is and then track it down find it love that it's probably the easiest way i would say but even if you suspect that that's what your group wants it's fine ask like do you have a plan on how to find i spy your hold and if they mention that I say go for it. Yeah, don't don't even bother with the the like captured orc or or any of that other stuff, and unless they give up that information, if they just say we think we could track it down, then let them track it down because that that's cool. It's gonna feel rewarding. Another option, if you don't have a ranger in the party, or even if you do have a ranger in the party, it would be uh, tool proficiencies, right? Like if if someone is a cartographer, they have proficiency in cartographer's tools or navigator's tools. Either of those, I think, are the two main ones. But if you think of anything else that's relevant use that too. have that tie into it. You know, if someone is, is an expert at making maps or land navigation or anything like that, they're going to have a much easier time finding a dragon, finding this place because they just, that's what they do. You know, <laughs> like if they're good at architecture, like if uh, maybe not architecture, I don't know. Car like carpentry? If, I was thinking architecture, but I, I might have changed my mind halfway through. Well, if, if you understand castles and holds and that kind of thing, and you know that he lives in a hold, where is that hold? Where would it yeah. make sense for that to be? You Especially know, as you um, get closer. Exactly. Yeah. Like if, if you have a character that has a background and, and they know certain things, have that matter. Players feel super yeah. excited when you tie their background into something and 
in ways yeah. that they don't expect. We have one character that is proficient in cartographer's tools, another character is a ranger, and another character is a trained soldier. You could use the tracking skills, the mapping skills, and maybe just tactically, where would someone put a fortress that's trying to guard the pass? Like, there's a ton of paths to try and make this work. Reward them all. If people have things they want to bring to the table, then let them bring it to the table. Even if one person's the main main one, they're rolling normal, and the other ones are rolling at disadvantage, or or you're adding half of whatever they roll to the, the cumulative DC. I think my other piece of advice for if they're trying to explore and seek out cryovain on their own would be have fun with it be a jerk if they're sleeping in the mountains because they they want to do this the hard way and they're up and they, they don't have cold weather gear or maybe they do but it's just an especially cold night because you're rolling on your weather tables and they're saying that it's an especially cold wet night maybe the next morning they're gonna have to roll some sort of con save otherwise they get a level of exhaustion or something like that but some people really they get into that and then yep. that's and if that's the case have fun with it just like in lord of the rings like did they use a campfire at night yeah okay well is it really that hard to imagine a random encounter showing up no you have a light and smoke <laughs> put it out you fools yep exactly <laughs> That section is chapter eight in the Dungeon Master's Guide. We're also going to have a link to that on D&D Beyond in the description, amongst other things. And while you're at it and you're checking out the description, you can uh, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and um, try to use a dragon emoji in your comment. I think we would appreciate, appreciate that. <laughs> Josh, the next thing we have in our structure here is quest goals. Um, wh what's the goal of the quest? <laughs> Defeat Cryovain. <laughs> Ding! <laughs> All right. As always, kill Hitler. <laughs> so yes, the goal is to defeat Cryovain. So in order to defeat Cryovain, you have to get there. And in the traveling to Icepire Hold, it says it's about, you know, 30 miles east from Phandalin. Depending on how the conditions are, what method they're using, how many miles they're trying, like the pace they're setting, I think anywhere from like three to six days is probably reasonable to think it just depends on how lost maybe they get or whatever you want to do but there is an ogre that cryovane killed that they are supposed to encounter and this ogre is frozen it was a little too big for cryovane to carry away but this ogre is carrying a sack that has three healing potions in it and this is also like a nice little place where you could maybe give any last minute prep items to party maybe you just know like they really don't have any healing options like at all so you want to do some graders maybe you throw a superior in there maybe you're running this for one person and you're like oh this is really going to be difficult for you so i'm going to throw a potion of invulnerability or something like that there could be a lot of ways to just enhance the group and make sure they're ready for this fight yeah you know you never know what you're going to find in an ogre's sack the other side of things that, which we kind of talked about before is just lean into how cold and windy and desolate this is i, I mean 30 miles not a crazy distance you could do that in one day but you're going up a mountain which is going to slow you down yeah it's freezing which is going to slow you down it's windy which is going to slow you down and there's probably going to be some sort of precipitation which if you hadn't guessed is probably going to slow you down so lean into that because that that just makes for a treacherous journey and a memorable one and you don't have to spend like a ton of time doing that like if you just want to kind of fast travel if you will like that's fine but just a couple sentences to just make sure they understand how difficult of a task this is that before them i think you're fine when i think about the the time that i i did the incline in, in colorado manito springs something like that the part that makes it so memorable is that i did it in the pouring rain those kind of things while it makes things more difficult for sure and if you're doing the be a jerk method like i mentioned they're definitely going to fail those con saves <laughs> but they're, yeah. they're, they're going to remember that Absolutely. so have fun with it josh we have now arrived at ice spire hold and pretty much the biggest thing to keep in mind throughout the entirety of while the group is there is that loud noises such as like maybe like a thunder wave spell or something that's really going to shake things up is something that's going to alert cryovane that there is something going on that he needs to check out because basically cryovane uh, the story is that cryovane's kind of just asleep 
Um, and then if he is alerted, he is going to start doing some circles around the hold, trying to find out what's going on. Um, you know, the wind is a good enough cover where it's not like you have to like obsess over like stealth checks and things like that. Or like if there's like some regular fighting, that's fine. You don't have to stress out about that kind of a thing. But I think it is worth at least asking the players, like, how are you approaching? Are you trying to be quiet? Like what's mm -hmm. even if all that does is just plant a little seed like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be quiet. Of course, we're yeah. quiet, right? You know, like it, it starts messing with their heads a little bit, and I think that's always fun. It's also a reminder of what they're doing because I think it's easy to just get lost in the the right now. So just that, how do you approach the people? Like, oh, uh, there's a dragon here, isn't there? Maybe we should be a little careful. With all the other ambient noise, it is kind of like it either takes negligence or just active trying to make noise to wake the dragon i think for the most part and maybe your players are gonna actually come up with a plan to trap him and make a loud noise and that's great that's fine too yeah and you know if cryovane does happen to find them you now feel free to just have him do some like hit and run tactics and I, I really don't think he should try and fight to the death unless they are actually up on the roof so mm -hmm. maybe just oh look there's two creatures here have some ice breath and let that mess with your plans however it's yeah. gonna work I love those kind of dragon fights, and I, I think that kind of makes it even more exciting. If whether it's because you rolled a random uh, encounter and he popped up, or just because your players were too loud to start the fight on the outside and then finish it in the lair, like I love that. Josh, it's time to talk about the Stone Cold Reavers, and I'm not talking about Steve Austin or anything like that. Stone Cold Reavers are a group of cell swords mercenaries adventurers i guess they're waiting for cryovane to leave so that they could steal the treasure that's there again the module doesn't have treasure really um but i kind of think that's crap so i ended up putting treasure in there because it's the end of the adventure of course you want to reward that no yeah. real consequences to giving them some fun loot at the end either it's the end of the adventure <laughs> Great adventure the entire way, and then they decide to end it with, with no weird. loot. It's just <laughs> silly. But well, what I can tell you about the Stone Cold Reavers is, after all was said and done, Austin 316 says, we whooped their ass. <laughs> you <So>. sure did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Stone Cold Reavers, uh, they describe them as neutral evil, which really just means they're very, very selfish and self-serving. That's pretty much all you need to know. And there's a description of, of all of them. There's four there. If you use the the Timor's luck where there is another Stone Cold Reaver there. You can have Dobbin, which I believe his name is, uh, you know, join the group. The description of each of their characters is there. If you need to do some RPing, that's always fun. It's also very fun when you want to showcase that banter and the rogue is like, I'm just hiding and I rolled 57 on my stealth check and I just want to watch them banter back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically like dance puppet <laughs> put on a show for us dm <laughs> each one of these stone cold reavers uh, statistically and mechanically is the same they're just a veteran they have that stat block they're cr3 and the module pretty much just force speeds combat down your throat here and normally i'm not that big into that approach so if the players do come up with something creative that's fine but the instructions are like anything they say they don't believe them you know, it's like just yeah. they're anything they do, they're just gonna say we're we're stronger than you. We're gonna we're gonna kill you. <laughs> at the point that we were at when we got there, like we were superhuman, and they were CR three veterans. You know, <laughs> like yeah. I'm standing there with a with a flame tongue glaive and shiny plate armor, and they're just like like, like a video game character with max level armor, and they're just like yeah. You're nothing. We don't care. We'll yeah. fight you. Here's the best a crossbow bolt. Yeah, that was the best part about it. Was like a, a you. You're like in plate armor, and I was like, oh, I'm probably not even gonna hit him. I rolled. I was like, oh, actually, I did. You're like, okay, yeah. oh, I yeah. rolled a one for damage. You know? I was like, this is so <laughs> awkward. I think the real danger here, Josh, is less the threat of the Stone Cold Reavers themselves, and more of an opportunity to do something stupid and make a lot of noise. Yes. And that's where i think the hidden danger is and you know it, maybe you're you have the you know we always joke about like the 15 minute adventuring day so maybe you have casters that are just gonna unleash everything it is at least an opportunity to potentially drain some resources here 
And yeah. I think that that is just significant. Like, if, if you wanted to beef up the fight a little bit, maybe increase the, the hit modifier. And they have pretty good HP at AC, so I think maybe just making them hit a little more and maybe maybe a little uh, an extra damage dice in there if you wanted to make them more threatening. But I think, I think we did kind of use the 15-minute Adventuring Day approach for this because, like, we, we had that fight and then rested and then fought Cryovane. As a player, like, that was a big stress of, like, I'm using resources... And I'm trying not to, but this fight is taking too long because I'm not using my resources. So they're either going to pick down at my health and then I'm not going to have the health I need for this fight. Or they're going to pick down at my resources and I'm not going to have the resources I need for this fight. I think you could have some fun ways if you're creative, maybe making your players like roll stealth or, or something during their attacks or so, I, I don't know any some there's some something there. I don't know what it is, but yeah. some sort of wacky mechanic to be like that board game. Don't wake daddy, you know, where you have to like oh click the button or the thing like pops up like Dracula mm. out of a coffin, something along sure. those lines where every time it's somebody's turn, every every round, you got to do something. And then if the dragon wakes up and now you're fighting veterans, mm -hmm end dragon and are they helping you or are they using that distraction as oh, a, yeah. oh we don't care like you know yeah. like, like oh quick that. run to his treasure hoard <laughs> who knows <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> and then you could be running through unknown territory which could be fun i think you described it pretty well you you didn't know they were cr3 creatures you just see these four like mercenaries kind of hanging out. i mean they're armed i think their ac is like a 17 which we'll put that up on the screen now they're pretty tough because they also have a good amount of hit points. So it's like the fight keeps dragging on and you're like, do we have to? I guess we do have to hit these things kind of hard. Th that's kind of where the confidence, like the awkward confidence of like confidence isn't, isn't the right word. Arrogance is, is the word for it, where like they're going to fight you regardless. That's where that kind of adds to the encounter, I think because there has to be a reason for that. And now they have more hit points than you'd think they would have. So you're like, is there's something more to this like should right. i be worried about this yeah. you know like why aren't they worried about me is are they the stupid unknown. or is there something <laughs> i don't know yet like yeah. <laughs> my personal opinion on the stone cold reavers is that if your players are they've been intimidating they're they're wearing their crazy gear and everything let them intimidate them let the stone cold reavers go away and that doesn't have to be the end of them it could just be they're going to be a problem later at a different point. Don't be afraid to go against what the book says and that they, they're there for a fight. Let them sneak away. They'll go do their thing and then they'll loop yeah. back around. And there's going to be a fight later because that's just what happens. It's probably going to be an ambush, but let the players have their, their cake for the moment. Yeah, they don't necessarily have to fight to the death either. And that's, that's also true. noted in the module. All right, Josh, so the Stone Cold Reavers are in that first opening foyer and then when they cross that little bridge section now you're into the the hold itself and to be honest as the dm this is almost entirely window dressing all it is is just an abandoned fortress whether it's things from the original warlord del sendra or the orcs or just damage from the earthquake really this is also just about potential fallback positions exploring making sure you know the terrain a lot of tactical players are going to really be into that so I, I would imagine josh that was probably you guys had to have been thinking like okay maybe this is where we might run to if we have to this is five by five you know one square wide so the, we'll mm -hmm. get away like if i fall back at this position can i still attack cryovane or am i just in perfect position to get you know breath weaponed <laughs> well yeah i mean that could happen too <laughs> <laughs> One of the most interesting parts about the actual map of Ice Fire Hold is section H23, which is the empty crypt and a secret exit. There's actually like a little getaway toboggan that they can take. And it's like They're like the Jamaican bobsled team. They are just trying not to fall over and do their thing. And down they go to get away from Cryovane if it gets nasty. But I also think it's kind of fun that there is a one-way secret door. And it actually references like, ooh, if they cast the spell Knock, that could open it from the outside. Yeah, you know what else that would do? Alert Cryovane <laughs> that you're here. So you might describe that. It looks like there's like maybe like a little entrance up there. Oh, do you wanna do you wanna try and climb? Oh no, you can only work opens from the inside. Oh, I know what to do. I have the knock spell. <laughs> you fool. <laughs> the last thing of note here is really just 
if you feel like your group needs something that hasn't been available or that they don't have or, or just whatever to fight cryovan uh, and just make that encounter more epic and more fun or even just doable if it seems like it's not doable based on all the other encounters give them ways to to get whatever they need whether they have to buy it or whether it's in another ogre sack our nice. group we we had a uh, we had a potion of flying a potion of invulnerability and a potion of love you did but all, <laughs> but all of those just became important decisions for us to make and and talk about and plan uh for who would get them when we would take them and just try to make that fight you know more doable for us and and especially the the cool thing with that if you give your players more tools is that it allows the dm my dm to make cryovane more dangerous without worrying about overdoing it and that's exactly what he did and if you want to hear more about what jake did to make this fight more epic and make cryovane more of a threat and more of a real dragon capstone boss big bad evil guy then check out the next video because we're going to tell you all about it